But it's not like the days after May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens just settled down. There was another significant series of eruptions that started in 2004. It was late September of that year when deep under the mountain, things began to shake and shake and shake. Tiny earthquakes by the thousands and then tens of thousands. By September 30th, scientists knew rock was on the move. And on October 1st, Mount St. Helens was erupting again. This reawakening had followed what the U.S. Geological Survey said was the quietest four years since St. Helens sprang back to life in 1980. But this wasn't just a hiccup, it was massive. We've seen these kinds of scenarios where there's a viscous plug that's pushed, pushed out first that then leads to an explosion. That's still, still a possibility. Helicopters pick up packages of instruments known as spiders from the parking lot at Johnston Ridge Observatory, five miles away from the crater, formed back on May 18, 1980, in the cataclysmic eruption. There was a plan to use drones for the first time. Every tool in the toolbox was pulled out just in case. Just the analysis of volcanic gases could tell scientists a lot about what was coming. Kind of cool. Perfect timing. I just parked my car, got out of my car. Plumes started coming up and then there was a couple small tremors. People came to see just how big this eruptive phase would get. Spectacular. And then on October 11th, 2004, there it was, not flowing lava like Hawaiian volcanoes, but an 1100 degree slab of rock acting more like toothpaste. Its volume not measured in cubic yards or truckloads, but the growth of rock measured against the weight of aircraft carriers. We are in a period that we are comfortable calling a renewed lava dome growth at Mount St. Helens. This new growing dome added to six years of dome growth following the blast in 1980. The source, a magma chamber locked and loaded down below. Yet while much of the attention focused on what was big, under the microscopes at the Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, Washington, it was crystals of rock and how they formed that told the story of what was really going on deep underground. Bottom line, this magma chamber isn't going to go away in the near future. There are going to be new eruptions from Mount St. Helens in the future. It's a live system. The expectation is that these kinds of eruptions will keep happening until Mount St. Helens rebuilds itself into something resembling its former glory, and then the cycle starts all over again. In Mount St. Helens, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.